guys and welcome back. So just the other day I was clearing out my earring cupboard. For those of you who don't know what that is, it's just another fancy word for pantry. And I came across a load of different products that I didn't even know I had. I also came across some very old but very good makeup products, which I don't recommend using now, but for the sole purpose and fun of this video, I'm going to. So if you'd like to see how I got this makeup look or the products that I use, then just keep watching. Okay, so you may have heard that there has been somewhat of a heat wave here in the UK. Actually, not somewhat, it has. It has just been so unbearably hot, well, for me anyway, who doesn't like the sun just as much as the sun doesn't like me, as one could only assume as I just get burnt every time we go out in it. Cheers, Mr. Sunshine, I just guess we're not supposed to get along. So with that being said, it is essential to find a moisturiser to go on top of that already applied sun cream. And these can come in different forms of creams or serums. While I've already used the Rich Moist Soothing Cream by Claire's, I think I'm gonna opt for the Rich Moo Moost? No, Moist Soothing Serum. So just taking a little pump cover off, time to pump. That was quick. Oh my, that feels amazing. I want more. Wow, that just spreads so easily across the skin. This has got to be water-based. Yep, replenishes moisture, gentle and soothing, water-based formula, ding ding, and vegan friendly, which is always good. It's amazing just how refreshed and hydrated my skin feels now. It just feels like it's had a really good moisture boost and also like a really good drink. I also like the fact that like most moisturisers it's actually left the skin quite tacky so it's going to be perfect for whatever I've got to apply next. Okay now moving on to foundation and I'm not really going to opt for a heavy base today because you know it'll just melt off. So with that being said I am going to opt for a little bit of coverage and you can get that with a BB cream but the one that I'm going to be using is by a company called Koja Beauty and it's just this little cute BB compact it's actually called the Mochi BB cream or Mochi BB cream I hope I pronounced that right I'm really sorry if I haven't and like I say it just comes in this really nice compact you've got a little powder puff which I don't think we'll be using because I never do and you just give it a little twist open the latch pull off the hygienic sticker Yes, I have already had a play with this. Okay, so how I'm going to do this is I'm just going to press some product out and I'm just going to apply it to various areas of my face and see how we go from there. I'm just going to blend this in with my beauty blender and it is, as I would expect, a very light coverage. Okay, so it has added a little bit of coverage, but not too much. Um, it's definitely taken away some of the red pigmentation that I naturally have in my skin. And it does feel really, really nice. It's like my skin, but better. It has definitely hydrated the skin. It doesn't feel cakey whatsoever. It's not left texture and patches where they don't want to be. Um, yeah, I think this is definitely acceptable just for throwing on while you're going out the door, or just as a daily coverage when you don't really feel like wearing much. Do you have them days? With that being said, I don't think it's gonna be the best for acne prone skin, as there's just not enough coverage. But overall, it is a really nice product, and it's definitely one that I'm going to be reaching for when I don't feel like wearing everything. Okay, now for some concealer, and I'm going to be taking the Illuminating Supple Blemish Cream, and it has an SPF factor of 40, which you really don't hear in any concealers. I don't know whether that's gonna to be too dark for me, but we'll give it a go. Seems quite strange going back to the tube design when you've had all the doe foots. Mm. Can't really tell any difference. I'm just gonna go back in and just layer it up a bit. I'm not sure if it's just because I'm used to wearing a little bit more coverage, but I'm just gonna go in with another layer just to see if this is buildable. Okay, so that has made a little bit more of a difference. However, I am pink toned skinned and this product does carry quite a yellow undertone, but I'm not mad at it. I mean, it has provided a little bit of coverage. Again, it's not high coverage, but then again, I don't expect that. I'm afraid this will always be an old dealer goodie, but I am just gonna go ahead and set my face with the Kat Von D Blotting Powder in Translucent. So I have had a clear out and I don't remember buying this. Would I be able to even afford it? But we're going to use it anyway. So it's the Urban Decay Baked Bronzer in the shade Gilded. How pretty is that? 
I'm just a little bit worried that it's going to be a little bit too warm to for my skin. But we're going to give it a go anyway because I apparently bought this and it's here so we've got to try it. Okay, okay, that's definitely warmed the skin up, hasn't it? It's really gave it a nice glow. And I have tried to apply it in those areas where the sun naturally hit my face. You know, just hit it, nothing else. So I'm just gonna go off camera and do my usual contour because if I showed it, it would be boring, wouldn't it? And you know what it looks like and you know how it works. Okay, now for some blusher and I'm going to be taking yet again another oldie which I didn't realise that I had. There's a bit of a theme coming here, isn't there? And this is the Illamasqua Powder Blusher Duo in the shades Katie and Ambition. Okay, so I think I'm going to opt for Katie as that just seemed to be more of my skin tone. Does anyone else like the smell of blushes? It just seems to have that really nice, clean, chemical smell. Okay, here comes Rosie. And... I've lost Jim. Okay, so for brows, it should become no surprise to you that I'll be using the Precisely My Brow Pencil in the shade 3. And I am going to try and just do a natural brow and just fill in any sparse areas. Just like that, keeping it incredibly natural and just a little enhancement to the brows, really. Like I say, covering up those few sparse areas. Come on, you knew it had to be done. However, I never really understood why they had a velvet casing. Did they not think it was going to get absolutely disgusting? <laughs> but look at that. That is childhood right there. I used to use the hell out of this palette. As you can see, my favourites were the neutrals and I didn't really delve into the daring type colours. I saw this in the cupboard and I thought, I really don't want to throw this out, but... Yeah, I can't see the expiration date's kind of rubbed off. But it is extremely old, and I really should, but I am going to use it one last time. As it was my first luxury item, so I feel like that kind of resonated with me a bit. So with that being said, I'm going to keep it fairly neutral for this look, and I'm going to be starting with Virgin, which is what I was when I had this palette. Add into the somewhat nostalgia and I'm going to be taking Naked and I'm just going to be applying that all in the crease. Just going to take a teeny weeny bit of bulk just to add a little bit of definition and just putting it right on the outer corner. Okay, just keeping it nice and fairly neutral with the shimmer shades as well, I'm going to be taking the Sin, which is this lovely skin tone pink kind of shimmer shade. And that is it for the eyes. I'm just going to go ahead and apply some mascara off camera. I'm not going to put any false lashes on. And I'll be right back. Okay, so because we're in the 21st century and now highlighter is a thing, Another oldie that I just happened to come across was the Benefit Sugarlicious Deliciously Nude Lip and Cheek Kit. And yeah, the lippy did go because, what could I say, I did like to use a good lip gloss. But we have still got the Sugar Bomb Blush, the High Beam Highlighter and the Benny Tint Lip and Cheek product. But because we do want to glow from the inside and out, I am going to opt for the High Beam by Benefit which is the little highlighter. So this is just a cream based highlighter. I'm hoping it is going to sit nicely on top of powder, but we'll see. It's very subtle, but it is there. You'll tend to find with cream-based products that they sit on the skin exactly how you apply them. So if you do quite a few splodges and then if you try and blend it out, you'll notice that you can still see those splodges in your highlighter, which it's not a problem. I mean, highlighter is beautiful, right? Okay, and last but not least, I'm gonna be using the Rouge the Velvet lipstick in the shade Hip Pink Chip, which is just this really nice mauve pink kind of color. And this is the final result. It's just this really natural, glowing from within kind of no makeup makeup look. I'm really pleased with how this turned out. It's just a really natural, flawless kind of looking base with just a subtle eye look and just a hint of blush, a little bit of highlighter, well, a lot of highlighter, 
and yeah so it's really nice to sample out some new products and I just can't believe that you can achieve this base with lighter coverage it's just something that I've never really been interested in but it's good for the skin and it still looks bloody good. So with that being said, I hope you did enjoy this video guys. If you did like it, then please do give it a big thumbs up. Also, if you'd like to see more of these type of videos, and if you have any suggestions for me, leave them in the comments below, and also hit that subscribe button, wherever it may be, to be notified on when I next post my new video. I think that's everything guys, and I will see you again in my next video.